New day, new task. We are going to be changing the transmission fluid on this E46. So BMW used a GM transmission in this car. It's a five-speed automatic, the 5L40E, and it uses Dexron 6 uh, fluid. So we're gonna be pulling out the old fluid, putting new fluid in, changing out the filter, cleaning out the pan as well. Over here we have 10 quarts of Dexron 6 fluid. I'm not actually sure how much we're going to use. We're not gonna do an entire flush, we're just gonna do a drain and fill. And here is a new filter, transmission filter, and a new transmission pan gasket. And they recommend replacing all the pan bolts while you're in there, so we've got a new set of those as well. All right, let's get this car up in the air, start draining the fluid. Now, for whatever reason, BMW specified three different fluid types for these GM transmissions, and the only way you know which kind it's supposed to take is by the label on the side of the transmission. If you can look up there, this one has a green label, which means it takes this Texaco fluid, whatever it cross-references to Dexron 6. So that's what we're gonna be putting in here. Now, the first step to this job is pulling out the fill plug, which is right here on the side of the transmission. Then we drain from the drain plug, then we pull off the pan in the filter. All right, so I finally got the fill plug off. It's kind of very tight. You wanna make sure you have a 3 8 17 millimeter six point socket to get on this because a wrench, the box end wrench will just round that off because I almost did that. The color of the fluid at least isn't terrible. So maybe this has been serviced at some point in the car's life, which is good. Certainly not red though. And that's what we'll be putting back in there. So you might be wondering, why is it coming out the fill plug? How do you fill it up past the fill plug? Well, when the engine's running, it circulates the fluid throughout the entire transmission. So you only top it up while the engine's running so that you can top up the correct fill level. When the engine shuts off, it then goes, the fluid level then goes above the fill port. But anyway, let that drain off. Let's pull off the drain plug. So these drain plugs have little O-rings that are supposed to go inside of them. So far, both of these, the fill on the drain plug, have the O-rings stuck to the receiving end. So you wanna make sure to pull those off and get them back on the, on the plugs themselves so they don't actually fall off when you have everything apart. We'll let that drain off and we'll pull off the pan. So removing the pan always leads to a mess. Luckily I have this oil drain reservoir thing, so I made very little mess taking this off. So this should have a gasket. So there's no need to pry the pan off. It should just kind of drop off because there's no RTV actually sealing that up like a lot of other transmission oil pans. Here's the filter right here. You just pull it out and replace it with the new one. And even though you pulled the drain plug on this pan, you can see there's still a lot of fluid that sits in this pan. This is why you still probably will get a mess when you do drain this. Throw this in the parts washer and get that cleaned up. See this pan and the magnets have captured quite a lot of debris inside of here. So it's a good thing I'm cleaning this when I am. You don't want that stuff chilling out in your <laughs> transmission fluid system for too long. Overall, it doesn't look too terrible in here. Get this cleaned up so it looks like at least someone's been in there, done something and serviced the car. So that is the pan pretty well cleaned up. And the other side looks pretty good too. Not looking for perfection, just looking for better. And here's the new filter. Let's go look at the old one. So you can see the old one has quite a lot of deposits built up on it. The element inside's pretty dark. This one should do a much better job. Now something to watch out for when you're pulling that filter out is that there are two of these orange o-rings that stack up only one of them came out when i pulled the filter so i had to get in there with a pick and pry out the other one because you don't want to accidentally try and press that new filter in and it won't go in all the way because that o-ring's still in there let's get this filter inserted in the transmission the only thing holding this filter in is just the resistance in those o-rings themselves it requires moderate upward pressure to get this to seat but just lubricate those o-rings and it'll go in so it holds it pretty securely. Now all I've got to do is clean this up with some brake cleaner, this perimeter, fit the new gasket to the oil pan and 
put it back into place. That is the pan installed with new bolts. Put the drain plug back in. It's got the new gasket on there. Looking pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna leave the fill plug out because of course we've gotta fill the transmission up. And I'm going to be using this pretty cool pressurized transfer pump that I've used for filling up other areas on the car. We'll fill this up with a few quarts of Dexron 6 and pump it all into the transmission. Gotta say this transfer pump is really spoiling me because this is super easy. So I put about four quarts in there and I'm just filling it up. Put some pressure in there and it's just filling itself up basically. You just pump this. You put your catch pan underneath it so when it does start overflowing, it doesn't make a huge mess. I don't know how much the pan really takes, but I'm guessing it's in the neighborhood of three quarts. But we'll just have to see. So again, we're filling this up until it comes out the fill plug, turn on the car, run it through all the gears, and leave the car running and top it off. The initial pan fill took exactly four quarts, so that's convenient. You can see it's dripping out right now. So I'm gonna fill this back up with about two quarts, turn it on and see how much I can stuff in there. All right, so I've got the car running. Got those two quarts starting to go inside of the transmission. Sort of precarious having to climb into the car while it's on the lift. Basically just pull out a park, put it in gears. Pop it over to the manual side just to kind of fill up the first three gears. It won't let you get above three. That's all right. It'll populate most of the fluid channels to get a good fluid fill. All right, let's go check the level now. So we've almost used up all two quarts and it's still not dripping out. So we might have to add another one here. I'm really not sure how much you're supposed to plug back into this and so we'll just have to see. All right, so I put the sixth quart in there and we've gotten about halfway through it and now we're leaking from the fill plug. So that means we are good to go here. We're gonna just stop the pressure, reverse the pressure. Uh, pull this out and put the fill plug back in. Try and do this without burning my hand on the exhaust. There we go. Next on the agenda is balancing all the wheels on this car. So the wheels are in pretty rough shape and you get a bit of a shimmy on the highway through the steering wheel. And you can see this one's pretty gouged up there on the lip. It's still okay, you can probably balance it, but I think that's what's causing it. It's just they're not properly balanced. So luckily the shop does have a balance machine over there. So I'm gonna whip the wheels off and do it. All right, so I've taken the passenger front tire off. I'm gonna use this pretty cool machine. So first thing we do is select the correct inner cone size. So I've already matched this up to this wheel. Then you just lift this up, put it on the shaft. Pressed up against that cone, kind of centered up. And then you take this little doohickey, square it up on the cone, put this foot lever down, draws it in to the balance shaft. So that's drawn in, just kind of give it a spin, make sure it looks even on there, which it does. Before we start doing any balancing or anything, you gotta make sure there's no weights on the outside of the wheel, on the inside of the wheel. You don't wanna throw off the balance, so it looks like everything's, looks like this wheel doesn't have any weights on it, probably because where the weight was, was smacked right here. <laughs> now we will determine where to place the weights. So first you measure the outer perimeter and then the inner perimeter with this little arm. Then you lower the hood, hit start. So 
it says it needs one and a half ounces on the outside perimeter and three quarters of an ounce on the inside. So this laser tells you the first stop, which is the outside. Clean that up a little bit here. See how dirty these wheels are. They're nasty. Gotta make them pretty clean so that the weights can adhere to something. All right, so two of these half ounce weights makes one ounce, so we will get one more. Just place the center one in the middle of that laser. Grab one extra to make it 1.5 ounces. Just go ahead and hit it with a hammer to keep them secure. Start to find the inner perimeter location. Okay, good. So the outer perimeter didn't change. The inner perimeter still says three quarters of an ounce. Just spin this till we find the location. There we go. So to do this one, I'm gonna use three of these quarter ounce weights. Line that up like we did the outer perimeter. Well, that is the inner put on. Start this. See if it comes back balanced. Sweet. So just hit stop, pull the hood up, release the uh, clamp. And I just put my center cap back on, put it back on the car. That's one wheel done, three more to go. All right, so all the wheels are now balanced. That should help out with the ride quality. Now I'm gonna be changing out the other sway bar end link in the front. I already changed out the passenger side one when I went through all the hell of replacing the strut top and CV axle on that side. These are pretty simple. You just have two nuts securing it onto the sway bar and the strut. Let's get to it. All right, so that sway bar link is now in place. And I believe that's where all of the knocking in the front end of the car was coming from. Because let's take a look at the old part. You can see can hear that moving around. It might not seem like much, but that will make it quite the racket as you're going over bumps because you're constantly taking load on and off that sway bar. It'll just resonate throughout the cabin. All right, so that's pretty much all of the mechanical repairs I can do today. Next week, I'm gonna come back in here and do an alignment on this car, but right now, there's currently a Mini getting a clutch job done right in front of the alignment machine, so this will have to wait till next weekend. The car wants to veer a little bit to the right, steering wheel's a little bit off-center, so pretty minor things, but it is the final bullet point left in the mechanical overhaul of this vehicle, at least all the big things that need to be done. So, until then, we'll see you guys again next time.